From the front hallway of the Mellons residence, we'll step out these double doors and into the Oak Spring Garden. The half acre inside these walls is quiet and contemplative, but filled with countless details. Facing away from the residence, the garden falls away in three stepped terraces, each with their own unique spaces and distinct features. As we step down into the first terrace from this brick patio, you'll notice the plants emerging from between the hand-carved flagstones. These include a variety of herbs, perennials, and annuals planted here with care, from Johnny Jump Ups to Pink Moss Flocks. This furry-leafed plant is Verbascum thapsus, or mullein, usually considered a weed, but it was one of Mrs. Mellon's favorites and was allowed to sprout up all over the property. As we move west along the upper terrace, we first see the beds beneath the residence's gothic windows, planted with Narcissus varieties minnow and ringtone, as well as the tulip variety Yop Groat. This carved marble statue of a crying woman sits in the white garden. After Mrs. Mellon passed away in 2014, many of her possessions were sold at auction. Luckily, a number of the statues, benches, planters, and other ornamental features remained and helped the garden retain the spirit and style Mrs. Mellon developed here over the years. From this corner, we can look back at the upper terrace and beyond. Now, we'll move on to the middle terrace, past the guest house on our left, and towards the square garden. Mrs. Mellon got inspiration for her gardening from the rare books, manuscripts, and artwork that she collected throughout her life, many of which depict European landscape design and gardening techniques. This square garden is a formal space, influenced by French garden design. The beds here are anchored in the corners by four crab apple trees and framed by espalier cordons of apple trees, also called stepovers. Beneath the stepovers are tulip varieties Green Star, Francois, and Formosa, mixed in with the daffodil variety Silver Chimes. Mrs. Mellon's favorite color was blue. And these beds always feature blue flowers, like these pansies, which will soon be succeeded by Camassia Blue Heaven. The books that inspired Mrs. Mellon remain here at the Oak Spring Garden Library, a collection of more than 19,000 objects dating back to the 14th century. The library is accessible to scholars, researchers, and artists through fellowships and residency programs. Just beyond the square garden is the children's garden which features playful beds shaped like butterflies. Here, we can take a moment to appreciate the sensory experience of the garden, which, in addition to sights and smells, includes the sounds. This time of year, the garden echoes with the burbling sound of running water, emanating from features like this small pool and a nearby fountain, which feeds a narrow stream running the length of the croquet lawn. But water isn't the only sound you'll hear. Mrs. Mellon wrote, the song and sounds of different birds are like scent. They bring back memories and atmosphere. Now, let's walk from the croquet lawn to the garden's lower terrace, along the wall beds. On either side of us, we can see different styles of espalier. To our left are more stepover cordons, and to the right are apple trees trained against the wall in the candelabra style. The beds beneath these walls are filled with the tulip varieties Angelique, Mariette, Belle du Monde, and Dordogne, as well as Narcissus, Bleeding Hearts, and Blue Muscari.
In this corner of the garden, sitting above large reflecting pools, is the basket house. Nearby beds include tulip varieties stunning apricot, bud light, and Avignon Perot, as well as Narcissus variety Jamestown. Between the basket house and the potager are these beds planted with flax and poppies. In a short amount of time, this area will be overflowing with the small blue and red flowers, like a wild meadow. Within the potager, or vegetable garden, are a variety of crops transferred here from our nearby biocultural conservation farm. More on that later, but within the garden, Mrs. Mellon's potager not only served aesthetic purposes, but also supplied the kitchen, as it does today. But the garden feeds more than just people. Pollinators bring the garden to life in the springtime, especially around the blossoming Mary Potter crabapple trees. Perhaps the garden's most spectacular feature is the arbor of these trees, pleached together along the path from the garden gate to the formal greenhouse. Mary Potter is a hybrid variety of crabapple, developed at Harvard University's Arnold Arboretum in 1945. When Mrs. Mellon first planted these trees here in the 1960s, she knew it would take years for the trees to grow up around this frame, and decades longer to fill out into the work of art that the arbor is today. At the end of this pathway, we'll step into the formal greenhouse. This central room is covered floor to ceiling in a mural in the trompe l'oeil style by the French artist Fernand Renard. It depicts the gardening tools, plants, and books that Mrs. Mellon loved. The greenhouse itself keeps the beauty of the garden throughout the colder months, displaying topiaries, citrus trees, and a variety of flowers from autumn to spring. Stepping back out under the arbor, we can appreciate Mrs. Mellon's use of light and shadows in her design. She once wrote that the use of sunlight depends on the place, shape, and form of the trees, and that shadows have the power to flirt, like a beautiful woman under a thin veil. As striking as the half-acre garden is, there is much more to see beyond its walls. The Oak Spring Garden Foundation owns 700 acres of the Mellon's former estate, and maintains this landscape for both beauty and biodiversity. Our arborists still prune hundreds of fruit trees every year in the distinct lollipop shape in which Mrs. Mellon had them kept. We've also planted 11,000 native trees and shrubs since 2017, actively reforesting almost 30 acres of our land and converting nearly 70 more acres of former horse pasture into native meadows. These projects help promote healthy and active ecosystems, which are increasingly threatened in our region by growing development. Mrs. Mellon wrote down her wishes for what the Oak Spring landscape should be after she passed away, saying that its natural resources will continue to protect wildlife, wildflowers, and birds, and that those in whose custody it be left will be selfless in their pursuit of caring. That is what we've tried to do, both in our habitat restoration and at our biocultural conservation farm across the property from the garden. Planted in 2019, the purpose of this farm is to steward the cultivation of heirloom vegetables and fruits in order to illustrate, save, and share the biological diversity of the edible plants that underpin our local food system. In 2020, we were able to donate 18,000 pounds of produce from our farm to local food banks, which were under the pressure of increased demand due to the pandemic. Projects like these ensure that the legacy the melons created here for the love of plants and landscapes and people will continue to endure.